the speech of, for instance, the American President Donald Trump referring to how much they spent or they, they spent on protecting trade secrets of major American companies and how much uh, theft of such secrets is costing America. Some of this trade secret could be referred to as the confidential business information, which is usually kept as a secret. For instance, the salary of the most fluid or most versatile you know, employee will be kept as a secret because once somebody knows it, poaching him becomes easier. He only needs to up it a bit and then he will fall for it. So it is very important for us to protect the trade secret. But in protecting the trade secret, we are only not taking that the trade secret is a property. I mean, ownership of a trade secret, they say, does not confer, you know, a right of exclusive use. People can actually maneuver to get your trade secret, but then your right is not for that secret is to be misused or not for that secret to be misused or wrongfully be acquired and used against you. Once the information is widely known, they say it ceases to be protectable trade secrets. So as much as possible, uh, it is advised that business intelligence may want to, as much as possible, protect the trade secrets they have because that is their only weapon in doing business. Some uh, issues associated with trade secret protection is the issue of non-competition agreement. Non-competition agreement is usually uh, uh, documents that are signed uh, by, you know, uh, uh, an employee, uh, and that employee is usually agreeing to a certain restriction that will bar the employee from working for a competitor when he leaves the company. So. Once we, you are entering into any uh, appointment situation, you are likely to be given documents to sign for non-competition agreement. And that you will usually be banned from uh, competing, I mean, working for a competitor within a certain period of time or within a certain geographic area. Have you realized that there are certain players when they play for EPL and their contract and when they move on, they don't usually play within the EPL, they would move on to another league and uh, they go. So the argument has been that non-competition agreement usually put unnecessary checks on employees uh, as they move on to, you know, uh, uh, push their career. Then we also have what we call confidentiality agreement. This confidentiality agreement is also usually signed at the point of you know hiring and uh, here it's uh, an explicit contractual uh, agreement uh, which obligates the employee to keep every issue within the organization as confidential as possible and not to release such uh, information to anybody outside the organization so by relying on an enforceable obligation of confidentiality, companies usually ensure that their secrets are not, you know, left out there. But like I indicated earlier on, these kinds of agreement places unnecessary restraints on employees as far as they would want to move and push their career prospects. Then we come to conflict of interests another very important issue uh, in ethics in business and even largely uh, the political space and public service. Conflict of interest is usually occurring when a personal interest interferes with a person's acting so as to promote the interest of another. So when your interest conflicts with the interests of people who you are supposed to protect such that you will pursue the interests that you have against the interests of those you are supposed to protect then we say that conflict of interest would have occurred we can have actual conflict of interest or potential conflict of interest 
Actual pro pro conflict of interest usually occurs when a personal interest actually leads you to act against the interest of some people whose interests you are supposed to protect or serve. So when a public officer's interests lead him to you know act against the interest of the citizenry then we are likely to say that a conflict of interest situation has occurred so if um, a chairman of a certain uh, uh, tender board review uh, clandestinely makes sure that his crony gets a certain um, contract he would have been in a conflict of interest situation the other uh, uh, type of conflict of interest is the potential conflict of interest which occurs when there is a high possibility that a person will likely you know fail to fulfill the obligation towards those who he's supposed to protect so for instance in the case of the bond issuance uh, uh, when the finance minister uh, uh, led this case uh, the opposition party for instance you know, allege that uh, the finance minister has been in a conflict of interest situation because he has already had relationship with uh, one of the largest uh, uh, patrons of the bond, Templeton. Templeton might probably have had information uh, since he has a certain relation with the finance minister already to have been able to prepare way ahead of time to acquire the large you know quantum of the bond that was issued so usually the potential conflict of interest we wouldn't have actually uh, um, supported that a certain situation has occurred that could be described as conflict of interest but there's, there's the highest potential that a person may renege on his obligation to protect the interest of another and even though uh, he may be seem, seem to be doing that. There are some four kinds of conflict of interest that we may want to touch on. One is exercising bias judgment. This kind of conflict of interest is uh, likely to occur because the one who takes the decision or the one who makes the judgment would have been influenced by large gifts, bribes, kickbacks, and other kinds of inducement to actually interfere with his obligation to protect the interests of those he's supposed to protect. So in business situation, if an agent who has a certain specialized knowledge is obligated to protect the interests of a principal, but he is induced by large gifts and kickbacks to actually renege on that obligation, then we say that uh, uh, the agent would have exercised bias judgment, influenced or induced by large gift. Then we can have what we call misuse of position. If you are in a position of interest and if you are charged with certain responsibility, when that position is misused, then you probably would have benefited in a certain decision that you would have taken. Largely, they say misuse of position occurs when an employee, for instance, has his personal interest, you know, coming in to affect the decision that uh, is made for the employer. So, for instance, if the public employs you and you are making a decision as a district coordinating director and your personal interest rules over your obligation to protect the interests of the public. Then we say you have misused your position. Then we can have what we call engaging in direct competition. This occurs when an employee engages in direct competition with his or her employer. So, for instance, somebody will be a medical doctor at Kolebu and at the same time having a certain clinic, you know, some meters away from Kolebu and clandestinely would refer his. Uh, 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 some patients to his clinic or when a certain you know auditor working for a larger audit firm like um, Einstein Young or KPMG 
will end up directing uh, certain clients of you know kpmg to see them in their private uh, small audit firms to conduct business with then finally when we talk about violating confidentiality this is when an employee uses the information gained in the course of an employment with a certain company to his advantage you know or the advantage of a new company that he's working on so this can also be a conflict of interest situation and that we expect that uh, as we work within the uh, sector we make sure that all these uh, situations are avoided because they constitute unethical behavior how do we manage conflict of interest we can only manage conflict of interest when we become very objective <clears throat> when we avoid going into that situation and when we disclose enough information such that they say if you have nothing to hide you have nothing to fear so objectivity avoidance and disclosure of information is very very important then competition we should allow competition you know to thrive in various circles of business because competition brings efficiency and if we are for instance bidding for a certain you know contract once we allow people to compete the best is selected we should also put in place rules and regulation guiding and uh, penalizing uh, people who go into conflict of interest situation and then we encourage people to be independent judges they shouldn't be influenced by any you know uh, a higher authority or any invisible hand and consistently we should see that there is structural changes in the organization because once people stay on the same position for a very long time they are likely to identify and create all kinds of loopholes to be able to exploit ladies and gentlemen this is where i would end uh, this lecture and uh, i will pause and then we'll come back to the next lecture later on thank you for having me